Hello squirrels and welcome to PPM6 TV. Today what it is is small diameter condenser mics and because they're small like this uh, Line Audio CM4 maybe they get overlooked compared to their sexier bulkier brethren like this uh, mighty uh, Austrian Audio OC828 and you can see if I take it out of its clip you know the size difference is <laughs> uh, considerable. Now I've titled this Germanic uh, SDC, small diameter cardioids, uh, condensers, because I was mostly using uh, German and Austrian mics, but I am going to put the, the, the Swedish uh, CM4 in there just because it's such a bargain and a great sounding mic. Now, I guess the, the top tip for the winner would be the Neumann KM184. It's a studio standard um, in broadcast and uh, uh, recording studios all around the world. However, however, I have <laughs> a worthy challenger in the shape of this, which is a uh, AKG 460B uh, amplifier with a CK61 capsule. I have good vibes about this. So let's get to the trial. Uh, stand by for the reading. Para handy, pension farms. Rearing pensioners, remarked MacPhail. You would lay out your money a lang while rearing pensioners. You might as well start growing trees. Not at all, not at all, said Parahandy. There's quick returns in pensioners if you put your mind to the things and use a little caution. Up in the islands now, the folks is giving up their crofts and making a kind of firm of their aged relations. I have a cousin yonder out in Giga with a stock of five fine healthy uncles, no a man of them under 70. There's another friend of mine in Mull with 13 heed o' genuine old Maclean's. He gathered them about the islands we a boat when the rumours of the pension started. Their friends had no idea what he wanted with them and were glad to get them off their hands. It's just a kind of notion I took, he said, for company. Their great amusement on a winter night. And he got his pick of the best of them. It wasn't every one he would take. They must be Al Maclean's, for the Mull Maclean's never die till they're centurions. And he wouldn't take a man that was over five and seventy. They're yonder new out in Loch Screedan, kept like fighting cocks. He puts them out on the hill each day for exercise, and if one of them takes a cough, they dry his clothes and give him something from a bottle. Holy smoke, said Doogie. Where's the profits coming from? From the government, said Parahandy. Nothing simpler. He gets five shillings a heed in the week for them. And that's £169 in the year for the whole 13. Enough to feed a regiment. One pensioner maybe wouldn't pay you, but if you have a herd like my friend in Mull, there's money in it. He buys their meal in bulk from Oban, and they'll grow their own potatoes, and the only thing he's vexed for is that they have no wool and he can't clip them. If he keeps his health himself and doesn't lose his heed for a year or two, he'll have the largest pension firm in Scotland and be able to keep a gig. I'm no a bit feared for Donald, though. He's a man of business just as good as you'll get on the streets of Glasgow. Thirteen old chaps like that about a hoose would be an awful handful, suggested Sonny Jim. Ah, not if it's at Loch Screedon, answered Parahandy. Half the time they're on the grass, and there's any amount of fanks. They're quite delighted swapping bores with one another about the way they could throw the hammer fifty years ago. And they feel they're more important now than they ever were in their lives afore. When my friend collected them, they had no what you would call an object for to live for. Except it was their own funerals. Now they're daft for almanacs and making plans for living to a hundred when the farmer tells them he'll give each of them a medal and a uniform. A oh, smart, smart lad, Donald. One of Britain's hardy sons. Nobody could be kinder. It's a fine way of making a living, said MacPhail. I hope they'll no go wrong with him. Fine enough, said Parahandy. But the job is not without responsibilities. Yonder's my cousin in Giga with a stock of five and a nice bit of ground for them and you wouldn't believe what it needs in management. You got two of them pretty cheap in sailing, one of them over 90 and the other 86. You wouldn't believe it, but they're worse to manage than the other three that's 10 years younger. The one over 90 is very cocky of his age and thinks the other ones is just a load of boys. He says it's a scandal giving them a pension. Pensions should be kept for men that's up in years and then it should be something sensible, something like a pound. The one that is 86 is desperate doer, and if my cousin doesn't please him, stays in bed and says he'll die for spite. That's game mean right enough, said Sonny Jim, after your cousin taking all that trouble. 
but the worst of the lot's an uncle he got an egg. He's 76 and talking about a wife. Holy smoke, said Dougie. Isn't that just desperate? Aye, he has a terrible conceity notion of his five shillings a week. You would think he was a millionaire. I could keep a wife on it if she was young and strong, he tells my cousin. And it takes my cousin and the mistress all their time to keep him out of the way of likely girls. They don't ken the day they'll lose him. Could they not put a brand on him? asked Doogie. You dare not brand them, said the captain. Nor kill them either. They'll all know loo it. So you see yourself, there's I a risk. And it needs a little capital. My cousin had a bit of a shop and he gave it up to start the pension firm. He'll be saying sometimes it was a happier man he was when he was a merchant. But he's awfully prude that now he has a job, as you might say, with the British government. Well, what did you make of that? The first thing I should say is if you have any love for, for Scotland and the Scottish, do get a copy, if you haven't got one, of Parahandy and uh, other tales. Uh, quite a brilliant piece of writing and authentically um, Scottish. Secondly, at the risk of being controversial, um, if you can't make a decent recording with any one of these microphones, you're an idiot. <laughs> a better mic is not necessarily going to make you better if that's uh, if that's your problem. Um, of course, um, I, I enjoyed the um, the Neumann. It's always good value. Um, it's it's a great bit of kit. I think there were a couple of surprises in there. Um, uh, one of the biggest was the uh, the old AKG Blue Line. You know, these are plentiful and cheap. And it holds its head up high, you know, and you, you're buying into um, a, a flexible system with lots of bits available. Um, that's um, uh, that, that, that's a bargain. I do like the 460. It's got a little bit of an edge, as I think the Sennheiser 604 has. Well, and the Neumann too, um, which helps to cut through. Um, and it's a comedy microphone, but I, I did like the Bear. I don't know what you thought of the Bear 753, but I thought it had, it just had that warmth that I like. Um, I need to get one with a proper capsule on rather than this enormous bit of string. But um, a bit of a surprise there too. And of course, uh, the Line Audio um, CM4. We know it's a it's it's a modern classic and it is very cheap and you can have a new one. It's not built to the, the same physical standard maybe as the others. But I mean, you don't chuck your microphones around or you shouldn't do. And therefore, it is a Swedish bargain. Thanks for coming to PPM6 TV. I hope you enjoyed your visit. Do subscribe, it does help. And come again soon. Bye for now.